In the latest episode of Hack My Growth, we're going to take a look at how we can leverage natural language to understand the search results in a much better and deeper way. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If it's your first time watching or maybe been watching a while and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so now. We create new content each week to help you get the most out of your digital marketing activities. As I said in the opener, we're going to be looking at natural language processing and how we can leverage that to better understand the search engine results page. Now, you may not have a background with computer science or Python or any of that stuff, but that's totally cool. We're going to walk you through it step by step. And we even have a collab file where really all you have to do is add your keyword and push a few buttons and you're going to extract a ton of really meaningful information. So before we get into the actual like work that we're going to go through in this video, I want to really just cover this once again. We did a whole video on this and I'll link to that video about entities. But in this video, that's exactly what we're going to be extracting using Spacey's NLP model. Um, so an entity is a thing or a concept, and it's singular, it's unique, it's well-defined, and it's distinguishable. Entities are what Google's looking at when they're trying to understand concepts. They understand entities. Entities have linked open data points. They have nodes that connect them to other entities. This is how Google gets meaning from our text. This is how they understand our text. Now, this is the foundation and the building blocks of our knowledge graph, right? A knowledge graph is a bunch of inter- connected entities. In SEO, we know the power of linking. Linking is extremely important from both sites outside of our site, as well as the site linking internally. And so by extracting these entities, we'll have a better idea of the concepts that Google's looking at when they're uh, presenting search results. So we're gonna go through a Google Colab file, and I'm gonna show you how you can leverage Google Colab, even if you're not a programmer. I'm not a programmer, but I am pretty decent at copy and paste and searching the internet to solve some problems. So uh, through a number of different resources and, and connections, I've been able to make some of these tools in-house that really give us an edge and allow us to see what's happening underneath the search results. So before we got started, I wanted to cover this really quickly. To learn more about entities, please check out the linked video. All right, so here we are in Google Colab. Now, Google Colab is a workspace that you can leverage to build software or to build tools. And in this case, we're gonna be leveraging Python. Now, if you have no background in Python, that's totally okay. Uh, I'm gonna give you access to this Colab file, which you can make a copy of and play around with in your own Google Colab file. It's completely free to do that. Um, so Python's a programming language. If you built websites or you've done anything in that, uh, in that world, you know, you could probably get the grasp of Python. I'm still learning Python. I'm, I'm not uh, a coder by any means. I don't even claim to be one. Uh, I'm good at copy and pasting, like I said before. So there's a couple things that we're gonna do in this collab file. We're gonna start by getting the results from Google. Uh, and then we're gonna scrape the results, so get all of the, the data and actually the content from the top results. Then we're gonna analyze that content and extract the most meaningful text, the most meaningful terms and concepts. After we're done with that, then we're going to go into some further NLP and we're going to extract entities from our top five pages and visualize that result. And then from there, we can you know, use that data to help us inform our content, other things like that. So to make this easier on everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. Oh, that's probably a little too far. And the first thing we need to do is just run these cells. You don't have to worry about any of the code in here. If you know Python, you wanna manipulate it, go right ahead. Um, but really we get started by just clicking play on these play icons. It's gonna install the necessary libraries and import all the tools that we're gonna to need to achieve this. So we'll go through these. Uh, right here we're just installing Google and Truffolatura, which uh, helps us scrape and Google helps us get the information. Um, and then we've got some pretty standard Python um, you know, imports here with pandas, numpy, pretty print, things like that. Um, next, we're going to install the things that are going to do the most of the work, and these are the transformers. The transformers are what allow us to do um, SERP analysis, summarizing the SERPs, get question and answering, extract the, the content from the web. This is where the powerhouse comes in with TensorFlow and transformers. Again, you don't need to know a ton about it, um, but that's, that's what those things do. And now here, we've got some... Uh, some things going on with like queries and that kind of thing. This is gonna pull the query. It's gonna look at um, what kind of results we wanna bring. There's a little bit more 
input here. You can read all the documentation if you're interested. But we made this super easy, so really you just have to go to this side and type in your query. So for instance, we can put whatever we want in here and let's, for the, the joy of this one, we're just gonna put semantic SEO. Once you've done that, now you run this query. Now this is going out and it's fetching the top 10 results from Google, and here they are. This is the top 10 uh, results from Google. Pretty easy, right? Now we gotta scrape the results. Now Truffle Tour, like I said, it's gonna go out into these pages above and it's gonna scrape all of the content for us and package it into one giant corpus of text. Uh, to do this manually, it would take a lot of time. Um, and thankfully, because of, of computer science, Python, codes like that, these packages that people have built, you can do this relatively quickly. Uh, hit the button and we're off to the races. Now this is gonna take some time, obviously, because it's gonna go out and it's gonna crawl all those sites, it's gonna pull all the text, and there you go, it's pulled the 10 articles and we're good to go. The next step is actually analyzing it. So we wanna see the text, but we're gonna see it, in this case, in a scatter text. Um, which is going to allow us to plot this on an HTML map and help us to see the importance of different terms based on ranking. So again, we don't have to do anything fancy. We just need to hit the play button. And this is going to start pulling that out. And notice right here, we've already started using Spacey. Um, Spacey is doing the NLP for us. So we've got all this data and it's actually in what's called a data frame and it's storing it. And now we're splitting that data frame. So we're going to have one side of the results will be the top three and the other side will be the, the top four through 10. Once we've run that and it's grouped the results, now it's time to create our visualization. So this is helpful, like I said, to see what is the most important text topics within the top 10 results, but splitting it to what is most important in the top three versus what is most important between positions four through 10. Uh, this can take some time, just depending on all of the visualization, all the data that's being scraped. But once it's done, it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool with what you can do. All right, so here we are. On the right-hand side, you're gonna see the top three and it's gonna kind of show us the, the most uh, meaningful terms. And then down here, we're gonna see positions four through 10 and it's gonna show us the most meaningful terms. And then it'll give you characteristics throughout the entire corpus. So over here, we can see terms uh, on an axis. So this axis right here, lower is infrequent, top is frequent. Uh, four through 10, lower is infrequent. Over here, all the way to the right is frequent. So you'll notice here in the top three, there's a couple terms that they use that the rest of the sites aren't using. Target keyword phrase, target phrase, keyword, broader topic, um, t t uh, target semantically. These are some interesting terms that are not being used as much in the other pages. And actually, if you click on this, this is what's really cool, is it'll actually show us how frequent these terms are. So in the top 10, out of 25,000 terms, these this term semantically was referenced 206 times. But when we went to the four through 10 and the top 25,000 terms, it was only referenced 17 times. So this is highly correlated here to the top three results. If you're writing content, you might wanna think about this term, what this term means. Over here in the top, this is what everybody's talking about, right? Content, semantic search, results, data, query, page, SEO, ranking. All of these are relatively um, connected with both one through three as well as four through 10. If we go down here, these are terms that are used a little bit more frequently within the four through 10, but not so much in the top three. So when you're creating content, let's say you're on maybe position seven, how can I work some more of these terms? Am I counting or covering these terms up here as well? It also allows me to see how these are mentioned and how they're phrased. Now, we don't copy and paste, but we can use this to help influence what we need to create when we're building content. Let's say you're trying to create content for this. Um, you can start to get a lot of good information on the terms that are necessary for you right here within just this, uh, this little corpus that we did, you know, schema.org. You can see all the things that are important. Now, if we f go down further, uh, it's actually created here uh, a way to extract the top 25 terms. So you can go ahead and hit this cell and it'll actually build that out and you can copy and paste the top 25 terms and you can see how frequently they're being used within uh, the top three or four through 10. 
Now, there's a lot of tools out here that'll do this today in the SEO world. NLP is becoming more and more uh, used in the SEO space. So phrase.io is an amazing content optimization tool. We will be doing a video on that. It's a tool we use all the time. Uh, and they actually do a lot of topic extraction, which makes it easy. But when you're getting started and maybe you don't want to buy a tool, Python is a great way to make some of these tools yourselves and also customize them to your specific uses and needs. So as you can see, so far we've ran the top 10 in the search. We've got tons of information on the text that's being used and how it's being used. And then we also have a list of the top 25 terms. Some of them are relevant. Some of them may not be, you know, like kid, like, is that really relevant? Probably not. So take it with a grain of salt. This isn't perfect. Um, you know, when we're doing these things in, in this world, we, we've got to just kind of look at it and then extract the meaning that makes sense for us, right? If this makes sense, then yeah, let's use it. If it doesn't, then we, we toss it out. So now let's do a little bit more natural language processing. The next thing we're going to do is um, move into extracting entities. And so I'm actually going to take this just the top five results and um, just narrowing it down a little bit further. That way we don't get overloaded with data. And then we are going to pull the content from the top five results. So we already did that before, but now this time we're kind of smashing it together, making it a smaller corpus. But here's all that fun content. And now we're going to extract the entities. And this is where Spacey comes in. Spacey makes NLP relatively easy. Uh, you can just check that out. I'll put a link to the Spacey site too. Again, if you're not, if you're new to NLP or Python even, they've got great stuff on their website as well that can walk you through this to help explain what it is and, and what it does and also give you some practice. We go ahead and hit the play button and Spacey's off to the, to the races for us. What it's doing is it's looking at all of the content in here and it's, track, it's extracting so what it's doing is it's looking at all the content in full body, which is this up here, and it's gonna extract both the entities as well as the types. And this is gonna help us organize them. The next thing we're gonna do is clean it up. So we're gonna remove duplicates because in this case, we don't need to see the duplicates. We just want to see uh, the entities themselves. And then I like to visualize the data. It can make our life a lot easier. So this is a tool called Plotly or a plugin called Plotly. And then we go ahead and run this. And you can see it's breaking it down by different types of entities. So we got like numbers, we got people, date, organizations, uh, money, events, cardinality, product. And the cool part about this again is you can actually zoom in. Now again, it's not gonna be perfect. Like Google Bing isn't a person, BERT isn't a person. Uh, so you're gonna wanna you know go in there and you can fine tune Spacey, you know, learn a lot more and, and learn how to fine tune it. Uh, it does a pretty good job on its own, but as you can see, you know, BERT is an important entity. So is Bing, uh, Google and Bing. Query is an important one. We've got Quora showing up here. Um, you can go further and further. Look at the different dates. Look at the organizations who are attached to this. Uh, search liaison, right, from Twitter. We've got algorithms and Apple and all that other fun stuff. So you can really explore and see the different concepts that are being used right here within the search results. And then once you're done, you can go ahead and store all of this information for yourself so you can go through it and start to create content for uh, the search engines as well as the user. You, then you can start to create better content for the search engines as well as meeting your user's expectations. In order to mark up your text and add that extra structured data, there's a number of ways to do that. You know, we've talked about it um, in, in a number of our videos. Uh, we also have some courses that you can take to learn how to do that at simplifiedsearch.net, and we'll put those links here. Uh, we also talk about tools like WordLift, which will also allow you to do this and help automate this. But running a SERP analysis is really, really cool to do because it allows you to see underneath. This is the data within the structured layer that, that you're getting some more visibility to that can help guide you when you're building an SEO strategy. So let me know if you have any questions. I know this is something a little bit more technical this time, but honestly, if you make a copy of this collab file, you just hit the play buttons and, and kind of go along with it. I think you'll find some really interesting insights. Uh, please comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. And until next time, happy marketing.